Welcome to another episode of Reusable Space Program. It's episode nine already. Wow. Um, in this episode, we're going to try and go to where everybody goes, Minmus. Join us. So you find us in space, and uh, Nakot is just uh, rendezvousing with our little um, our little space fuel tank, and we're just uh, she's just there to to basically. Um, fuel it up a bit because we want to make sure it's full of fuel in case we need it later um, the important thing is she, she's just this now there is a glitch with fuel transfer in um, in KSP 1.10 this was and so uh, yeah this took a while but um, yeah so she's gonna stay on station while we put together the uh, the X4C Odyssey and this is gonna have Sean in it and it's basically a modification of our previous rockets um, there we go. Off he goes. He's uh, he's basically a stripped down. He's got a science unit on there, and it's it's a standard launch. It's a little bit of a wobble. If you notice the, the launch there, he's got a little wobble. We've got quite a long rocket that is actually quite narrow, and so it's a little bit of a wobbly one. And I'm concerned that we're actually getting a bit too wobbly. So probably in the next few episodes, we're gonna have to de develop some sort of additional launch plan or a bit of a heavier craft because these are okay for getting to sort of low curb in orbit possibly to minmus possibly to the moon but we're not going to do much with them and be reusable remember the whole point of this is reusability i've got to be able to bring all this stuff back so that first stage it's reusable if we actually if we actually tracked it it's got a probe core we could actually track it all the way down i've done that and we're actually using um stage recovery just to, to make it quicker for me and, and for you but each of these stages have been tested this second stage here this uh, this boost stage um we will actually track, and it may not be this episode, but we'll we'll definitely track it. I think I've already done one previously where we've tracked it down, so we'll, I will check. I'm not going to do every single one of them returning, but I want to prove to you that this is a reusable program. So we're just going to boost that up into near orbital position. And that is, you know, it's becoming an easy sort of task for us now. We're just getting it up there and, uh, and seeing how it goes. So we've got a little bit of lift on the nose there just to, to sort it out. But it all goes reasonably well. Um, you know, this is a craft that we've used multiple times now. We're, we're basically just refining it. Um, we, we add a bit of something here. We take it off just as if it is reusable. So this is the, the X4C Odyssey. But actually, it's very similar to the X4B and X4A. And it will probably be very similar to the others. So here we go. We're going to just flip around that, that, that boost stage. And it's going to put itself into the orbit. Now, interestingly, because we're time warping, it will probably not go through the atmosphere. So I'll probably have to go back to it and watch it go down into the atmosphere or be recovered. So we're going to finish our burn off with a little terrier engine on 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 Sean's craft there and then he's going to look at right how do we get to, to Minmus I've left uh, Nakot on station in orbit with the fuel reserve because I think I've got enough fuel for this um, for what I want to do but there's always a chance I don't and the return from Minmus it's a it's a high altitude return so I'm concerned about that as well so it's a, it's a double whammy um, what we're actually trying to do is and ironically I'm trying to get into a polar orbit of Minmus. So actually highly, highly eccentric and, and highly inclined is advantageous for us. Um, I just happen to uh, to choose pretty much the worst, I think, point because it's near its um, ascending and descending node, which is when you tend to get odd little things happening. So we're gonna go in and you see it's pretty equatorial. So I wanna do is reposition it, there we go. So we're gonna pop underneath just like that. And I wanna go close. I, I, I want to use the old birth effect to get as much bang for my book here because every every sort of meter square meter per second delta v is important. So we we line ourselves up with the maneuver node. We're gonna fast forward time a little bit to get to it. Make sure we're okay. And uh, yeah, you can see we're facing the planet right now. Not the best position. You will also notice <clears throat> that I have still got on the bottom of the craft some RCS ports from its previous mission where it was Friendship One. That is a problem because that is extra weight that I have not accounted for. So we're actually taking stuff that we don't need to. We don't we don't actually have any RCS on this craft. I removed the RCS from the command pods of all of these craft because, you know, extra weight. Reusability, da 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 da. Um, the, cr the crew aren't doing EVAs, so I don't need to worry about it. They don't need extra fuel for their packs. So there we go, we fire the engine and uh, off we go. And you can see those, they, they just annoyed me the entire, entire journey. Um, we have that, um, 
cargo unit on the bottom primarily because ooh, I don't really want to change the craft too much. The X4 is pretty much a standard structure now and the idea of taking the housing for the engine out and replacing it, it just, it felt bad to me. And also, you know, with the new updates to Kerbal, um, it means if I leave one of these in orbit, I can actually attach, I've got a space for attaching stuff. So that'd be, that'd be quite cool as well. Um, but anyway, so we're doing our burn. It's nice and easy. Wonderful little burn and we get close enough. Now notice he's he's only a, like a one star pilot at this point. So we do have prograde retrograde control, but that's about it with him. So it's, it's pretty manual and, and station keeping. And then we can just do forward backwards um, just to, to make sure we get near to Minmus. And then he is off on his journey. Now we're gonna put him into the normal orientation. You see that I'm putting the nose onto the normal. This means that as he goes along, we'll actually definitely get sun at some point onto those solar panels. If I leave him uh, facing prograde, there is a chance it will just be in shade. And I'm concerned about electricity because although this isn't realism overhaul where electricity is king, um, I don't really want him to run out of electricity and not be able to do anything because then it gets problematic. So while he's doing that, however, down on Kerbin, uh, Matt is getting a little bit carried away. Well, no, he's not carried away, but he's, he's trying some things. So he's got a mission to try some new parts out. These, these, uh, landing gear and he can get money for it and he's thinking yeah i'm an engineer i'll do this um so he's going to put together his very simple craft craft the the te or one ear which is the test for engineering one ear and matt himself is going to go on it that's right matt is leaving leaving the ground i think this might be his first time leaving the ground he's done the rolling on the ground but he's never actually launched anything so here we go and all we're doing is there's no sas there's no nothing we're just gonna fire it sideways there we go and hope that it's okay now in manual control this is very difficult because it's a solid booster and we're just using the luckily it's a small one we're just using the uh, the the torque in the command pod right now and our aim is to get it into water because this mission was to splash down and test this wheel splash down it's a nice little contract just for a little bit of money and if nothing else it gets Matt a little bit of experience so we're just gonna pop our parachutes there we go over the water floating down now why am I bothering with this? Well, at this moment, money is king. We, we get a lot of craft back, which means we get a lot of money back. But um, the big thing for us is that um, I want to start getting our, our team experience. That is important to me. And I know that it's not much. It's not going to get him a star doing this, but it's going to start him on the way. And engineers and scientists at the moment are and are a bit underwhelming in their importance. Our pilots are actually important because we don't really have any other control mechanism, but shortly we will actually get uh, uh, command control systems that allow us to do a lot of the orientation without a pilot. And that is when our engineers and our scientists start to become very valuable because you know what? A capsule is heavy, a Kerbal is heavy. If I don't have to take a pilot and I can take a scientist or an engineer to do the job, I'm gonna wanna do that. But they've got to have a bonus to them, otherwise they're just a normal Kerbal. So Matt's gonna do his bit of engineering check. He checks the wheel, makes sure the mission's finished, wonderful and all that sort of stuff. And then before he goes, he goes for a swim because you know, he's it's not just gr the ground that he's scared of, it's obviously water. And that's, I think a beautiful view of underwater, underwater Matt. Uh, can, he, can he do, yeah, he can do a little surface sample from under the water. He's obviously reached down into there and got it. So anyway. Let's get back to the main missions. So Sean is now coming into the sphere of influence of Minmus. And this is where we then start to go, right, we need to minimize all of our, our Delta V use. And I did not, this was a bad move. I was trying to basically force myself into a uh, into an, an orbit that, that I wanted. And I started doing all sorts of burning when I really shouldn't. Um, in reality, what I, I probably should have done is get myself into orbit, any orbit, and then do the inclination change at a nice high point. The concern I had was that actually the ascending and descending nodes were likely to be quite close to, to Minmus because of the way I was going to do it. But anyway, I thought, you know what? Uh, so we've set this one up and I don't think it's the most efficient, but it's 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 not bad. It gets us into a, a sort of close-ish polar orbit. And my key here is polar. I want to be going pull around Minmus because then I can go over as many biomes as possible. Um, any polar orbit will pretty much do. So this is a reasonably polar orbit. I can't remember the exact you know ang angle or whatever, but it's, it's it's pretty close. Now it has cost us quite a lot of delta v to do that though. So I'm now at this point going right. 
do I need to bring Nako over with this? And that is going to embarrass Sean. Sean is, you know, Sean having to be rescued from Minmus is something that he, he's never going to live down if he has to do it. And Nako, although she's nice, she's not going to let him live it down. So at this point, we look at how much fuel it's going to take to circularize. And I decide instead of circularizing, we're just going to get into orbit and decide later. Once I'm in orbit, I can actually look at how much delta V it's going to take to actually get out of orbit and get back to Kerbin because we're going to be in this highly elliptical orbit. We're going to do a, a transfer back to Kerbin from a polar orbit, which means we've got to time it right. Now, a lot of people will do equatorial transfers. Polar transfers, just as good if you have the right timing for it. You just got to wait until your, your orbit is orientated correctly. Okay, so there we go. About 190 uh, delta V. Um, which is a big chunk of what we have, but that's fine because we don't need to actually stop when we get back to Kerbin. We just need to get close enough to Kerbin to have the atmosphere do something for us. We also have that spare fuel tank that we're carrying, that extra ballast. So we're not doing too badly right now. So we're going to prepare for our little circularization, well not circularization, our capture burn. We line up nicely and uh, off we go. We're going to gonna off we go to the races speedy 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 get it's just lined up and again we're doing this sort of semi-manually we're gonna speed to there we're coming nice and close to Kerbin. don't know why that accent came out and then we're just going to uh, we're gonna retrograde burn now i can put it on the retrograde because well all we need to do is capture i'm not fine tuning anything right now i just want to stop us from missing because if we miss it's going to cost us actually more delta v doing anything so we do a quick bit of science checking because, um, you know, if I do mess this up, we may not get a chance to get this close again to this place. So, you know, every opportunity and whatnot. And uh, we're just waiting for the time. We hit the burn and you will see. Here we go. And there we are. Just into orbit. Look at that. So we've just literally just we wait until the screen spun, which means that we're basically we're, we're in orbit. Um, and there we are. And now Sean can just sit and, and do science. And the plan for Sean at this point is that he just basically EVA science all the way around. We're going to try and science spam. Um, I do not have any science sort of collection mods on. I wish I did actually looking back on it because some of the mods you can get will automatically tell you if you're in your biome and things like that. I don't have that. I'm having to look down at the surface. Um, one of the issues I did find when I was doing this was... Um, you look down at the surface of Minmus from the craft and it looks very sort of, ooh, it looks all the same. Use the map window to your advantage. That's the bigger one, particularly not so much on Minmus, but on the moon. On moon, it is vital because close up looking at moon, you will not see any characteristics. But from the map view here, you can see Minmus. Beautiful little idea of what's going on. So before we decide to change our orbit anymore, I decide, right, we need to actually look at what's our our return cost going to likely be for this so we're going to come down to the to the bottom of here and we're going to we're going to put in a a, a node we're going to put in a burn and we want to see how much is going to cost me to get out of orbit of minimus it's not going to cost me much at all okay next step well when do i want to do it i want to i want to rotate around my orbit enough times so that the orbit of minimus is facing in the right direction okay and then we're just going to mess around and yeah you know what don't go that way go the other way yeah it is important and this is what i'm trying to show you this is sort of five six uh, orbits beyond and it's still not lined up properly so play around with your orbits because there is always going to be a slightly better one somewhere so there you go we've tried another one and that's put us into orbit now if you want to do a really inefficient burn you can yeah just do that and we just we just i'm playing around right now trying to figure out right how much delta v am i going to need i know i'm going to need about 30 from this orbit 30 to 50 to get out of minimus's orbit uh, minimus's sphere of influence but then it's how much do i need to have once i am coming and there we go i start to actually reposition ourselves and we can see that we're, we're actually lowering our our periaps there around Kerbin. And it is, will be important to figure that out. Um, you can put, if you really want to do it, you can put nodes on your on your curb in orbit there, and then calculate it that as if you did it. The, there we go, as if you're going to do it. The this is the the less efficient way, but it will give you an idea. It'll give you an idea of what you need to do. So I know I've got about 50, 50 meters per second there. I know that's about roughly where I want to go to. So if I close that one, I close that one. Take account of it. I need about two hundred delta v. Have I got two hundred? Possibly. So 
then I know that I have to double whatever this burn is. This burn's going to take me 50. Great, that's another 100. So that's 300, 400 delta V I need. Have I got that? Mm, just about. So even inefficiently, I can do it. So while I try to decide if that's going to be what I do, um, why don't you join us next time when Sean does a bit more science and we, um, we try and bring him home. And it's not so much the getting back to Kerbin, it's the landing that's going to be the problem because he's going to come in very, very fast. So until next time, have a great one.